I'm Mike Farrington. Welcome back to my shop, aka the boardroom. So in this video, I'm going to be building this coffee table. I get started in the usual way of roughing out some parts with the chop saw and the bandsaw. The lumber I'm using is alder, and I chose that because you can smoke salmon on it very nicely, and also because it takes a dark stain well. And it's also cost effective, which helps. After rough milling, I sticker everything for a day or two, then I come back to the joiner and planer for the final milling. Quick pro tip, cut everything to length first. Then take your parts over to the table saw and use the edge tech to clean up the edges after cutting them to length and this will sand off any blowout made by the chop saw. All right, now that I have the parts dimensioned, it's time to do some joinery. And if you watch my other videos, you'll know that I like to use a biscuit joiner. But the biscuit joiner has one main disadvantage and that's the width of the cut that it makes. Oftentimes you'll find that it's a little too wide for the workpiece. So whenever I find myself in that situation, I pull out the domino. In this shot, I'm gluing up what will become one of the two sides of the coffee table. I don't often recommend specific tools, but in this case, I will. This router is made by Milwaukee, and the thing that I like about it is it has a strap for your hand, and that makes it real easy to hold when performing operations like rabbiting. And it's back to the biscuit joiner. Always a good idea to sand before glue up. And another quick pro tip, don't over sand your projects if you're gonna be applying a film finish like lacquer or polyurethane. 150 or 180 grit is plenty. All right, take a look at my jug of pub mix right there, and you'll notice that it's filled not with pub mix, but with biscuits. And if you look a little closer, you'll notice that those biscuits are gigantic. So the smaller biscuit in this shot is a size 20, and the one that I'm holding now is a size S6. So just to be clear, the sizes of biscuits are 0, 10, 20, and S6. That makes perfect sense. So this larger biscuit's great when you want a little extra strength. It does come with one drawback, and that is you have to plunge the biscuit cutter twice. So to give you an idea of the added strength of these larger biscuits, I used to know a carpenter who would use these to construct interior doors. He would use three biscuits stacked on top of each other at each corner of the door. And you know what? Last I heard, he'd never had a callback. All right, shifting gears here before I glue up. This is called the Blum Universal Individual Template. How's that for a great name? So this jig is designed to help drill holes for drawer slides as well as hinge plates. So with this jig, a five millimeter drill bit and a stop collar, and you can drill the hardware holes for pretty much any hinge or drawer slide that Bloom sells. I'll include a link in the description below. And this is not a cheap gimmicky kind of tool. This thing is really accurate and it does exactly what it says it's gonna do. And here's the payoff, some accurately placed five millimeter hardware holes. So let's take a closer look at why I feel it's worth the effort to use five millimeter system screws as they're called. Here I'm showing a traditional panhead screw versus the five millimeter system screw. 
And as you can see here, the panhead screw has a lot of play in the holes that have been punched in the drawer slide. And compare that with the 5mm system screw, and you can see that the screw and the drawer slide mate together much better. And this is beneficial, in my opinion, for two reasons. One, when you're assembling everything, the drawer slides and drawer boxes and all that will go in with a little less fussing. And two, it will prevent any shifting that can occur from usage over the years. All right, enough about hardware. Here I'm just gluing the legs onto the two sides, and I'm using those large biscuits that I talked about a little bit earlier. All right, this happens to me every day at around five o'clock. I lose track of time, and my wife comes home with a shop apprentice, and they come up with a vicious plan together to sneak into my shop when I'm not looking, and then they scare the pants off of me. All right, so I don't know if you could tell by my cool, calm demeanor, but I pretty much had a heart attack right there. So as of the making of this video, the shop apprentice is just a little over two years old. And I'll tell you what, he sure is a motor mouth like his dad. So after I regained my composure, it was time to get back to work. If you have plans to build a torsion box style workbench, as I've done here in the future, I recommend having a little overhang on the side. It is convenient for clamping. I'd like to mention that I have plans to rebuild the top of my workbench, and that should be coming up in the next couple of months, and I'll do a full build video for that, so stay tuned. Now it's time to cut out some veneer-coated MDF, and this will fit in the openings of the sides of the coffee table. And since I used a router to cut the rabbit, the inside corners are rounded, so I either need to square the rabbit, or I need to round over the corners here on these panels. And the reason I've left these panels out until now is for finishing. It's much easier to stain and top coat a separate panel than it is to try and get into all the nooks and crannies created when this piece is installed. Fits like a glove. While the glue was drying on the coffee table itself, it was time to move on to making some drawer fronts. Always time for a corporate coffee break. All right, after that, it was time to make some drawer boxes. And I like to use half inch thick pre-finished plywood. The place that I buy it from calls it Baltic Birch and it comes in five by five sizes, not four by eight sizes. And I hold everything together with five millimeter dowels, four at each corner. On this project, I'm using a drawer slide known as the Bloom Tandem, and it requires a notch to be cut out of the back of each of the drawer boxes. And this creates clearance for the undermount slide mechanism. Now that the drawer boxes are assembled, it's time to drill some more hardware holes. This jig is known as the Bloom Tandem Template, and I'll include a link in the description below. During this build, I pulled out an album by my very favorite band, Rush, and the title of the album is Moving Pictures. And by my standards, this is fairly new music, as this album was released in 1981. And the entire album is excellent, but there's one particular song I'd like to recommend, and that's Red Barquetta. 
This is a song about a car, and in traditional Rush fashion, the song is very descriptive. The drums are incredible. The song's really well put together. So, yeah, I highly recommend it. Now it's time for some sanding. I think it's really important to ease the edges of a drawer box. This is one of the places that people will be touching and you want it to feel nice. And now I'm just finishing the tops of the drawer boxes with Osmo, which is described as a hard wax oil. Now I have no idea what that means, but it sure does sound good. All right, the last item that needs to be completed is the top. And the top is a piece of plywood that is wrapped with some solid wood. And I like to use a hand plane and my shooting board with a miter jig attached to it. Really creates nice tight miters. Once I have all the pieces properly fitted, I like to use the biscuit joiner for alignment and glue and clamps. So I speak often and fondly of my biscuit joiner and here's one of the main reasons. By turning this dial, it moves the cutter in the opening up and down by one-tenth of a millimeter increments. So what I do is I cut all the slots in the plywood, then I adjust the cutter slightly and I cut all the slots in the hardwood edging, and it creates a little bit of a lip that then I can come back and plane down flush. So after cutting all the biscuit slots, I clamped and glued everything up, let it dry overnight, then I turned to the lipping planer to help me flush up the solid wood to the plywood. When using a lipping planer like this one at a 90 degree corner, a lot of times you can't get all the way out to the edge. So I turned to my trusty Lee Nielsen hand plane to solve that problem. And now it's time to attach the drawer fronts to the drawer boxes. And I'm using Bloom's drawer box adjusters to do this. And if you would like to know more about how to use these, I have another video titled How to Build Custom Built-Ins and Fireplace Mantle where I go into more detail. Essentially these drawer box adjusters are a system to attach drawer fronts to drawer boxes and it offers some adjustment. With the construction complete, it was time to take everything apart and start applying some stain. This stain is made by a company called Duraseal, and it's their Quick Coat line. And it's actually a finished design for flooring. Uh, and conveniently, there's a flooring company near me that sells this stuff, so it's easy for me to get, and I really like the way that it works. Alright, so after applying the stain, I applied a thin coat of clear de-waxed shellac. And I do that to act as a barrier coat between the wiped-on oil-based stain and the sprayed-on water-based lacquer. And as somebody who came into the industry when pre-catalyzed lacquer was all the rage, changing over to water-based systems really was a pain. But now that I've made the switch and I've learned the little idiosyncrasies of water-based lacquer, I'm really glad that I made the switch and there is no way in fornication I would ever switch back to solvent-based lacquers. So the first thing you'll notice about spraying water-based lacquer is it's fairly thick. So you need to set your gun up to be able to atomize a thicker coating. And here my gun is set up at about 35 PSI triggered and as you can see the finish just comes out of the gun dead flat. So after the finishing process was complete, it was time to put everything back together and add some handles.
so I dusted everything off and took some glamour shots. I had a bunch of fun building this one, and I think overall it turned out pretty good. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Till next time.